As a video producer for Giant Bomb, I see a lot of game footage day to day. It's one thing to be interested in a game, but if you want to play it after spending hours editing a video review, that's saying something. Here are the games that not only pass that first test, but also manage to stand out above everything else. Battlefield games can be immensely frustrating, and 1943 is no exception. But if you're like me, you play for those crazy fluke moments, like when your tank somehow ends up on top of a plane. How did that happen? I don't know, but uh, it's because of those situations that 1943 really stands out. In addition to the game's tight controls and accessible fighting system, the variety of things to do and spot-on pacing make Batman Arkham Asylum an absolute joy to play. The story did little to keep my interest as merely a casual Batman fan, but that's just me. The most striking thing about Xenoclash is its refreshingly bizarre art style and creature design. I never really wondered what a rabbit-elephant hybrid would look like, but now that I know, I feel somewhat enlightened. Add to that an innovative, if somewhat clunky, first-person fist-fighting system, and you've got one of the most genuinely unique games I've seen in years. Explosion Man has a simple concept. Your man, explode. Despite this, the developers managed to get a lot of mileage out of the bare bones premise, presenting you with new challenges all the time, which keeps the game engrossing. Where it really shines, though, is co-op, which goes from great fun with two people to bordering on madness with three. If co-op, puzzle platforming, and non-stop explosions sound like a good time to you, Explosion Man will not disappoint. I'm a big fan of the Halo series. And while I do enjoy driving warthogs around ring worlds, I was pleased to find such a different setting and tone in Halo 3 ODST. The action is slower paced and the mood is pleasantly subdued. The firefight multiplayer mode hasn't really stood the test of time with me, but it can be a blast when played with a few of your friends. Video games are supposed to be fun, and on that criteria alone, Wii Sports Resort takes the top spot. It has a lot more mini-games than the original Wii Sports, and while some of them you'll only play once, the rest are tons of fun, especially with friends. The Motion Plus stuff works pretty well too, except that the basketball game hates me for some reason. Modern Warfare 2 is, in many ways, the equivalent of a popcorn action movie. I like action movies. And popcorn. So the over-the-top story didn't really bother me, and the variety of the levels did a lot to keep me engaged all the way through. Not to mention the controls are impeccable. The Spec Ops mode is tons of fun with another player, and the multiplayer mode has more rewards and pats on the back than Little League Baseball. Dirt 2, like no other racing game I've played, perfectly tweaks the driving formula to allow for tremendous depth while still managing to feel fun and accessible. What results is the feeling of barely being in control as you hurtle through cramped straightaways and around hairpin turns, which, when you navigate through them successfully, are immensely satisfying. With stunning graphics, an absorbing level-up system, and an absolutely stellar soundtrack, Dirt 2 is one of the most polished, fun, and addictive racing games I've ever played. I was kind of late to the Shadow Complex party, and after hearing the guys in the office hype it up so much, I was skeptical that it could live up to my high expectations. But guess what? Totally did. Shadow Complex takes some old game ideas and packages them in a slick new presentation that kept me hooked for the duration. The only time I stopped playing was to go to sleep, albeit begrudgingly. Borderlands made me break a lot of my bad gaming habits. I finished Fallout 3 in 11 hours because I don't really do side quests. And I can count on one hand the number of games I've gone back to after beating the main story. But despite these vices, and me having such little time for video games these days, Borderlands somehow commanded my attention enough for me to sink hours upon hours into it, without me ever once getting bored. I did every single side quest, finished the game, and still feel that itch to jump back in. And that is why Borderlands is my game of the year.